uh-oh, the dreaded 4491 and 4423. In this video, I show you what I do to overcome that on a particular probing job on an older GM. If you're working on Class 2 vehicles, this is something you'll have to do sometimes to get the job done. It's not uncommon to see this in the field, and you're actually going to see I kind of forgot or over missed a step here. But I wanted to share with you all this information about programming. If you want to learn more about setting up TLC, GM programming, Chrysler, Ford, all that stuff, be sure to check out handsonautotraining.com. If you like this content, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. We got a 2003 uh, Tahoe trying to program the engine control module replacement unit here. <clears throat> and as you see, this is going to make the beep poop sound. There you go. So this is going to air out. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I started a process here. This thing's a little bit of a mess, as you see. But we do have an aftermarket radio. So um, I'm going to go on a whim here and take that thing off the network because this is just a Class 2 network. I believe the radio fuse is underneath the uh, fuse block right here. I didn't pay attention to this. Usually I make a point of checking these type of things before I do the param. But let's see, radio, radio. 15 amper right there. I'm gonna go ahead and yank this thing out. Pull that radio fuse out of there. So the radio is dead. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the retry button. You see we got our line operation air codes here. Failed, disconnected. I believe at this point I'm just going to go ahead and hit the X button out of here. We'll go back into our SPS2. We're going to give this a whirl again. And uh, I don't program nearly as many of the older GMs like I used to, so this is, uh, I guess I just forgot to go ahead and uh, check <laughs> if we had an aftermarket radio. I should have known better, but we'll see if this fixes it. And this does have, I believe, an NP8 transfer case. I had to go through this the first time just so you see that there. And I've already got my screen captures of this. So I have to start worrying, but we're going to see if this thing takes off and goes here. If it still airs out after this, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, probably disconnect the splice pack comb and see if we can get things going. But we are stuck right where we were before. Come on, let's start the process. So it's still airing out. So I believe the splice pack comb on this thing is right up in here, right up over there. I think we're going to have to isolate this network. You see, you guys can't see that, can you? This guy right here. This is the splice pack comb. I'm wiggling it right there. So I think we're going to isolate the network and see what happens. All right, so you can see here we've got our uh, data link connector. Pin 2 for class 2 communication goes to our splice pack. This is a purple wire, so what we want to probably do is jump our pin 2, uh, which is right here, it goes to terminal D, which is interesting, it's always hooked to the theft of our model. We're going to jump our pin D to pin B, so purple to dark green at our splice pack connector here is what we're going to do, and then we're going to try and program it again. Alright, so that splice pack was way back in there, I had to bend this bracket out of the way, loosen that up, and then we've got in here, so you can see we're in terminals B and D. There's not enough room in this thing, man. So we're gonna hop back into our SPS here and see if we can uh, finish this job up. Let's return home. And since I did have all that disconnected over there, my DLC lost connection to the uh, MDI, as you see right here. So this here is uh, not connected, so let's go ahead and see if it pops back up. All right, we're going to connect our device again. I had to disconnect the USB because it got silly on me. We're going to go back into our SPS2, replace and reprogram, and we're going to go ahead and hit the check mark here. So we've got, basically, we should have a direct connection just from the PCM to the uh, DLC. That's all we should be going on there. And I think the theft the term module is still online according to that diagram. Just so you know, you see we have a Brindle that's not lit up properly because it doesn't know that we're in park because the cluster is off the class 2 network. So we're going to hop in here and go to our powertrain control module. And next, 
And if we are actually hooked to this, it's gonna come up with unrecognized calibrations on this screen here. If we aren't actually hooking up to the PCM, we're gonna have something different. Uh, looking at this diagram, I was also pondering the fact that maybe we're going through the BCM and that's causing an issue, so we'd have to go to C100 and check that as well. So it's talking, um, this is an MP8 transfer case, next. So it is pulling all this information. So we're gonna hit the go button and we're gonna see if it airs out this time. I've had a lot of these older GMs, we have to bypass that. I was really hoping the radio would be the problem there, but uh, we're gonna see what happens. It's stuck at the 33, 44, 41. That doesn't look good, that's kind of stuck. Oh, no, we got a little sliver, it's happening. We're in there. Issues with the transfer. So there you have it. We got the software into this computer as far as the engine control model software. We got the theft deterrent learn done. This vehicle has some other issues. I might be making another video on that to share with you all. You guys have a great day. Once again, if you like this content, please do like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you.